Took that and made the ears. Oh, the the, the hair. That's an antenna. Yeah. And then comes down, makes that, and then that makes the feet. Interesting. So it's just two triangles. That's cool. On top of each other. And then that's what the rocket scientist guy made this thing. And then uh, Roland came up with Bostovich, and those are speakers. Oh. You know. I mean, I mean, I don't know if they're sure speakers, but they, the, the sound waves that come out of them. Yeah. Have you ever seen him paint them with the sound waves coming out I think out so, of them? yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. he's a collector of sound. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so he started painting it, and, um, you know, and he's painted from the 70s. It's from, from the 70s on up, you know. He'll tell you the whole story. He loves to talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Because he's a fine painter. He's a, he's a master painter. That's yeah. what he is. He's, like, an incredible painter. Yeah. So, like, to get his chops out there, I guess he started painting Bostovich to try to, you know, uh, for people to find out yeah. his talent and all that kind of stuff and see it. So, it's cool, I mean. Yeah, it's totally cool. It's yeah. rad. He's super, he's a great drummer, you know. Yeah. You know, he's a hipster, you know. He's like, what's up? He likes to play drums and all that stuff. But he's a, he's a real master painter, him and his wife, and he paints all kinds of stuff. That's really cool. All kinds of crazy stuff. But, uh, yeah, Bostovich is his baby. I was like, why, why isn't... This in every head shop from here to Timbuktu. Yeah. You know, over the last 25, 30 years. Yeah. Because it'd been cool. I'd bought one, buy my, put by my black light, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was, the, that was the whole thing. You want to be an artist, and you got this wacky idea from a, from this rocket scientist. And he started painting it everywhere, like Joey Frawley at Armadillo Hand. That one's not there no more. but. When he, he painted his, Joey put a bunch of gasoline on the ground, caught the ground on fire, and burned it all up. Oh, wow. And called the the, the uh, newspaper and news and stuff. Said aliens have landed, and they left this freaking painting on my building. And I got the proof that it landed. So he made the black mark and everything. So that's interesting. Yeah, it's totally, see? totally cool. I, mean, uh, I have a couple uh, lavalier mics that clip on the wireless. Sure, sure. Would be okay that. Go for it. Yeah. For the, yeah. You know, I yeah, we'll use your phone. Have you talked to him about all this? I haven't. I, I oh, he's such a bastard. He's like him and his wife. They're like, rah, rah, they're going to, you know, who knows? Because they, uh, uh, you know, he's. I thought it would be a little more interesting if I just. It'd be awesome. Contacted him after, awesome. after I did this. I think be we like, hey, give him the headlock. Like, we're making a film about you. Yeah, no, no, I mean, I, I hope. Because he's, he's, he's a, okay he's a super anyway. interesting guy. Yeah. He worked at, like, I want to say Sears or Dillard's yeah. for like 35 years, like oh, in wow. the back, stacking them up. You know, he, so he had a totally stable gig and stuff. And, yeah. But he wanted to be a painter. And I think he's from Cabot, and I don't, you know, I just don't think mm -hmm. that artists seen that We have all the. In Cabot. <laughs> all right, well, let me. Uh, I'm Scott Diffie, um, local tattooist for 30 some odd years. Um, 
local musician, happily married husband, and a just all around fun guy. Nice. Could you tell us a little bit how you got into tattooing and this sort of business? Uh, I was in the wrong places at the right time, uh, washing dishes at a Mexican restaurant one night, and uh, the owner's son was cooking, and he's like, hey, man, I'm going to go get this dragon tattoo colored in. You want to go with me? And I was like, sure. So we went to uh, Greg's Tattoos, and uh, that was on Asher Avenue in, in 1989. And uh, the next day I went back, and I've been tattooing ever since. I started in 90. So, yeah. Nice. Could you now, uh, Josh over at the other tattoo parlor mentioned you were, you were, you know, you did music back in the mm -hmm. '90s and were in bands. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I was. Uh, I played all through high school. Uh, in a bunch of bands. Uh, everybody knows me from a band called Go Fast. Okay. Uh, so we did a couple records, and you know, we got a couple record offers, record deal stuff. So played on the road a whole lot. You know, with bands like Honky and, uh, you know. Uh, mule head and stuff like that so yeah we've been playing a long time all right but he'll just take a butter cut like a butter bowl and he'll put a bunch of black on one side of it and a bunch of white and then he'll just go in and start mixing you know he'll mix as he goes and he'll just paint it from scratch and he got that out of wood i have i get bad anxiety sometimes when it comes to like medical procedures that hurt don't worry so. about it. don't worry about <laughs> it i'm not gonna hurt you i got tons of tricks not to hurt you all right what? Yeah, stay in the camera. You'll be fine. I got a lidocaine in my wash. I got much. I got soft touch needles. Sweet. I tattooed like angel kisses. They say. Camera just runs away. Uh, we'll see. Hey. Hmm? <laughs> All right. So, could you tell me about how you first, first learned about Balsavich? I'm sorry. Uh, I learned about Balsavich when I saw his painting in Levy. Uh, the one on the big rock. And then I found out he had one on the Triumph building down uh, down Highway 10. No, not Highway 10. Going out the old Conway Highway. And uh, there's a fan place, so I saw one there. And uh, my brother would tell me the story about, you know, the alien, the guy that got abducted by aliens. And he was put back and he started painting that thing. Mm -hmm. And that was little bitty when I saw that because he he's been painting it forever. I was born in 71. I think he started painting in like 73. Uh, you know. Could you tell me more about the alien abduction story? Well, he told me that it was a, uh, it was a, him and another kid got abducted. They're going to train them to fly spaceships, like, like, you know, warships or something, okay. and for battle. Yeah. So they needed the best. So he didn't pass the test. Oh, wow. So they kept the other kid, and then they put him back on Earth. And they give him the power of art. They give him the power to paint. Mm -hmm. So he, uh, plus they gave him the vision of Bostovich. And he started using his, his vision and his talent to promote it. And he started painting it everywhere. Nice. So, so how, it's kind of like the first tagger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? So how did you end up getting uh, like a piece of his? Like how did you end up getting art? Like the clock is like from the old shop, and um, he would come to the tattoo shop. We would throw uh, little events, little get-togethers. We would have uh, like hot rod hangouts where we would have bands. Uh, we'd have like uh, we would do art like right on the spot. We would paint uh, big uh, pieces of plywood and stuff that we cut out. Okay. And then we'd have artists come out, and then he just heard about you know what we were doing and stuff, and he start coming out. That's cool. Super cool guy. I mean, he's not like a, a hermit or nothing. He loves to do stuff. Yeah. And he loves to paint and paint his stuff. Um, he was at Legends of Arkansas a couple of times, okay. painting out in the parking lot, you know, cool. and selling his stuff. He's a super crazy painter because he can, he just whips it all up on okay. from nothing. Yeah. I've got this big piece of plywood that he painted. It was called the, um, the Thing That Lives in the Cave. And it's this huge monster that's coming out of this cave and it has this lady in his hands. She's just wet and just give out, and he's just holding her, and he's coming out with this big head and eyes. It's just so creepy. I've yeah. kept it for years. It's at my dad's house. That's cool. Uh, I got another painting of a little furry monster. That's a pink furry monster that he painted just the face, and then on the on the nose, it's got a heart. It's really funny. It looks like a uh, what's those things in uh, in Star Wars? The little furry things and Empire Strikes Back. Like an Ewok. Yeah, it looks like an Ewok. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was painting monster stuff, but that's cool. So uh, I guess he has, I mean, he so was, he's painted a lot more than just the balls of it. Yeah, he's yeah. a painter. He's a master painter. I mean, he's a, 
he's a rad painter, you know. He just wanted Bostovich, I guess, to try to get his name out there, people to notice, you know, and stuff like that. He'd sell paintings at Dino's, you know, and uh, you go down to Dino's and they have paintings in there for sale. Yeah. He used to go down there and try to sell that stuff. Yeah, I have a friend that works at Vino's. Okay, yeah, I've worked out. The back, the Vino's behind the stage, the painting, is his Vino's. Yeah. I painted that 30 odd years ago. That was you? Yeah. The, the, like on the brick wall? Yeah, I painted that. That's I was, cool. That's hungry. Uh, that's like the only, that's like the. That's the longest lasting yeah. piece of, of, of graffiti that uh, Henry paid me a hundred bucks. Well, I mean, everyone sees that one. Yeah, and uh, one time on Facebook, I had people um, list all the bands they've seen in front of that painting, and it went for weeks. It was just, it was just thousands and thousands wow. of bands that played in front of that thing. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. The so Josh at the last tattoo shop said uh, that you were in a band and you hired Ed Roth to do an album cover. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, we um, here, I'll give you one. Um, what we did is uh. We got signed by HTS Records, and that was a local record company. And this guy that run HTS, he's like, uh, I'm going to get Ed Roth to do your album. And we're like, okay. So he sure did. He got Roth to do the album. Yeah, the Great American Get Down. Sweet. And that's me driving the car, and it says, real men like real music on the motor. You can have that. Is he on the back of it? Thank you. He's got the tattoos or nice. You know. But that was what was it say two thousand? That was twenty years, twenty four years ago. Yeah. And we'll be playing um, February third at Dino's, I think, or Whitewater. I don't know oh, yet. sweet. But they're doing a, a Bercho. Our friend passed away. The drummer for Trusty. Oh really? And uh, we're gonna have a little thing for him. It feels like a lot of the people in the rock just kind of know each other. There was a you know, huge the music people. scene in the 90s. Yeah. There was a picture of all these people. It was a huge music scene. Like at one time, everyone had record deals. Everyone was making records. Everyone was doing stuff. That was before phones. When the phones came in, it screwed it all up. Really? Yeah, because we used to all have to buy a van. <laughs> we didn't have a phone. We had a map. Yeah. You know, we're like, ah. Oh. You know, we played New York. I played CBGB's twice. I got into tattooing to fuel all that. Like a good life. <laughs> yeah, I was the first tattooer in the state of Arkansas kind of thing. I asked all the questions I really wanted to, but we can get B-roll of sort of post-tattoo. Yeah, I'm going to bandage it and everything. Yeah. I, I really like the shading on it. Isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah it's great. Well, that's how he would have done it. Too, it sets in and it'll get even cooler. In that shade gives it some soul. I mean, you got a Bostovich, dude. That's cool. Oh, that's oh, awesome. sick. I love it. That's amazing. My first pain tattoo was the, was Henry Lee, the owner of Vino's. Wow. They tattooed him in Vino's during a show. During a show? Yeah, I'd, tattoo, awesome. I'd take it in there. <laughs> I'd set up a fucking area and tattoo people. Yeah. I'd do that show all the time. Yeah, I've been playing all my life. I got into tattooing just to play, so yeah. I saw I could afford it, you know, and then there was no money in, in you know, uh, rock and roll, and, and we were, you know, Go Fast is full-fledged, I mean, we played with Skinner and Gretchen Wilson, Candlebox and Saliva, we had record deals, you know, all kinds of shit. What happened? How come it hurt? It's just, just when we went to um, see, what was it, we did a, we got a, th after that record, we got a three record deal from a company in Chicago, Yeah. and we were recording that record, uh, the first record for that deal, and Kevin Kirby was producing it, a Mulehead, and one of his friends came in from Nashville, Tennessee, to just see him, to visit him, and um, when he came in, to, and we were recording that day, and uh, the guy heard us, so he's like, Fuck this, man. He went back to Nashville, talked to a couple people, came back with a guy, and uh, they said, we'll get you a multi-million dollar deal. We won't, oh, wow. we won't, don't do this three album deal. Yeah. Just drop it, and then we'll make a demo, and then we'll go to, uh, we'll, we'll shop it, and then they shopped it, and then Creed's manager got it, and took us to a big music festival in his part of the world. But Nick Ferrara saw us, and that's, you know, like Chevelle, Nelly, David Bowie. He's a big turning. Nice. He took us to New York, and then uh, it didn't happen in New York, so the guys just didn't want to fuck with it. Wow. And we'd be, yeah, because we'd go on the road with Honky and, you know, shit like, we'd go with Dixie 
pitch and yeah. people like that. And Honky's the ex bass player for the Butthole Surfers. Oh wow, <clears throat> that's Pinkus. All right, you look good, buddy. Sweet. Sort of center in the frame, just so we have a still shot of that. If you look me up, if you Google Scott Diffie and then start searching online and shit, yeah. you'll find there's a parlor, a, a sizzler for the parlor reality show. Yeah. They were going to do a reality show on us. You That's know, pretty like, cool. Like the, the Tiger King and shit. Because oh, wow. we were in Rose City. So it was buck wild. You know, you could do anything. We'd have live bands in, we'd have live bands in the garage like four nights a week. Yeah. And we were booking bands. We had four bands. We had like four bands rehearsing in the house. We had bands playing live. We tattooed out front. You know, I was in four bands. I was in the Cunts. I was in uh, Go Fast, The Martyrs. Um, I was in Iron Tongue. Um, so, you know, it was full fledged. We were rock and rolling down there. And people would, you know, they're just, we're just trying to help the scene out, you know, in Little Rock and yeah. do something other than drugs and all that shit. Yeah. But all those punk rock kids started coming over and playing. And, um, and I thought they were forward thinkers, you know. I thought they were you know, long steppers, but they weren't. They are were all shooting heroin and shit. And I was like, well, fuck. Yeah. And one day, like, nine of them OD'd in Little Rock. And then a girl like OD'd guy. at Central High School. So I was drinking coffee, you know, on Facebook. I was like, tell you what, if you come throw your dope in the toilet, heroin or ice, I'll give you a $100 tattoo for free. Wow. And by the end of the day, it was shared 20,000 times. It went viral. Oh, PBS wow. called me. Uh, Memphis Station called me. Two news stations here. And I was just like, I'm just trying to get to the kids across the river at OD, and I was figuring, hey, man, if you know, something help them, I'll give you a little tattoo, a yeah. little pep talk, you know, try to get you through a bad time. And the news did a thing on it, and it took off, you know, I was like, Lord. Yeah. And yeah, it's been a lot of, a lot of mess. But That's if cool. you Google me, you'll find out a bunch of shit. You know? Yeah. Just Google, <laughs> fo follow Scott Diffie. There's a bunch of reality shows. Uh, there's a, you know, there's a big thing that'll come up on me. My mom murdered my grandma when oh, I was like 22. Wow. <laughs> So she blamed me for the murder. So oh. that was a big Venus thing too. Like everybody's calling her Diffy, you know? Fucking wow. Okay. Yeah, that was a big thing. So yeah, the murder. Murder. yeah. Big. There's a murder in my in my story and shit. There's a you know I got a whole documentary. What's made, the story but. without a, a murder accusation? Yeah. You know? Well, mom was in and out of prison all my life and did a lot of you know drugs and yeah. this and that. So she got out of prison and was staying with grandma. Just she wanted car keys, you know, and granny didn't give her car keys. So shit went down. Ended up she murdered her. Blame me for it, and then you know they they knew that she did it, so it's just a bad deal. Yeah. But if you look at my and see the involvement of me, I've been in Vino's since the start. You know, I know everybody there. I know you know, and Boston Beach is way older, way yeah. older. It's seventies. Yeah. It's totally cool. It's like the first tag, and then it was the first thing you saw that you had no idea what it was. And then you heard how aliens are involved. And the yeah, I think he it was like, like anonymous for years yeah. before he came out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he became friendly, you know? He would just do it and just to do it and, you know, you know, have the, you know, rumors about it and yeah. stuff. But then he started coming out and painting them in, like in the real. You could watch him paint them. Uh, he would paint other things and stuff. And his wife really promotes him because uh, he's a master painter. I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, he's amazing. I mean, he'll paint and just, you know, he loves to hang out and play, play drums. He's a real good guy. Yeah. Uh, I wish we got a, a, a break, like in the late 70s, early 80s. Because uh -huh. I think that thing should have been in every head shop in America. It should have been by the Daglo posters, yeah. the bombs. You know, you, when you see, yeah. like, a, a Grateful Dead poster, you should have seen a boss of it. It's a great know? icon. It's a great character. It's a great character. You know? And it's got a good story. Yeah. You know? He's like, man, they were teaching me to, to fly ships, and I didn't pass the test. Yeah. But they, they weren't upset. They just dropped me off. They took the other kid, and they gave me the power of art and the vision of boss of yeah. to share with everybody. So... It's cool, and you know, I think Arkansas needs some urban legends, yeah. you know, and that's really cool. And you know, he's a part of the scene. Uh, he's a part of the, the art scene, he's part of the music scene. Yeah. And once you start talking to him, he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna let you go. Yeah, he ain't gonna like it. <laughs> that, that's but, the goal. But, but what you, you really need to, you know, to to bottleneck it into how good of an artist he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's amazing, man. He'll just take some colors and a bucket and a piece of board and just, you know. Um, yeah, he's he's really really great guy. Yeah, he paints some crazy shit. And I got that painting at my dad's house, uh, the thing in the cave. Ask him about the thing in the cave. Thing in the cave. So right. badass, big head, big eyes. Got these hands. He's holding this this limp lady, and he's coming yeah. out of the cave. I'm like, what is that? You know, I kept it forever. So. Yeah. But yeah, he's a really cool guy. And um, you know, that's the only artist that we have. I think like that. 
in 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 Low Rock. I don't think that uh, anyone else really did anything and kept it going. You know, yeah. And still around doing it. And he'll paint one for a hundred bucks. You know, yeah. he did. He paint for a hundred dollars. I'm like, sweet. <laughs> and it's priceless once you get one. I yeah. that, the the worst thing about selling Rose City. Uh, we, you know, we've been there ten years. We live there, and you know, it's it's not a, a hopping money place. But yeah. we we had a real good time, and we built a good clientele. And the the worst part about leaving that was leaving the Boston Yeah, right? and I was totally. like, man, I had a real Boston in the house. Yeah, and he even painted the, the letters under it, Boston really? You know, because yeah. the letters have a thing too. Yeah, you know, the the lettering of the Boston has got the circles in it, so uh-huh. it's got a whole story too. And when you get to, to know him and stuff, he'll take the story. And it it's it uh, it starts with a rocket scientist. Super smart dudes, you know, super super you know enthusiastic cats trying to do something cool. Yeah. And he's still around. That's amazing, you know. It's just that uh, things have changed in the world, you know. And yeah. You know, we've got some cool murals going on downtown La Rock. Um, we've got some great mural painters and stuff, but nobody like that would tag something like that. And, yeah. You know, we'd grab, like, all the hippies and we'd grab all the regular folks, you know. Yeah. The hood rats would be like, what is it, you know. And then Levy, when you get off, get off the, you know, you're getting out of Levy going on the exit, he's got that big rock painted there. Yeah. So yeah. all the, the hood rats and all the Levy rats and stuff were like, it's our shit. Yeah. It's our <laughs> fucking stuff, you know. So yeah. it's cool. And then whenever someone paints over one, he'll go back and paint them. And how and often do people paint over one? Man, like somebody painted one, one the one in Levy, real bad. Oh, you know, wow. just painted. Oh, just didn't care. Like so that. he, I think he um, organized the time and the day that he told people that he was going to go out there and repaint it during yeah. a Sunday. And people just went out there and fucking parked their cars and hung out and drank and spoke, watched him paint. Yeah, you know, and it's Boston Edge. I think it's great. You know, I hope it. I wish, you know, I wish things would have worked out for him when he was younger, but we didn't have social media and yeah. YouTube and all that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. And he'll paint, he'll paint other things too, you know, he'll paint big murals and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, he had a big quarrel with the, the lady, you know, and um, Stiff Station, when you're going to Pizza D, on the right, there's a big painting of a trolley. Yeah, I think I've seen that. Okay, but someone repainted that. He, wow. he painted the painting before that. Okay. So he had a big discussion, to, to, you know, about hiring mural painters that don't, you know, know what they're doing. Blah blah blah. So he, you know, there's a there's a frisky side about him too. Yeah. You know? And yeah. Um, I mean, fighting for his art, you know. Yeah, but at the same time, you got to be a good marketer. You know, what I'm yeah. Saying? I mean, you nah, can't I tell it. people to fuck off and you know I need this and then blah blah blah. If you, you know, market yourself really well. Yeah. You know? No, I, I get that. You know, so. He's a good guy. And Bosovich is a great story, and it's been uh, it's been a cool thing. I don't, I've never heard anything negative about Bosovich. It wasn't drug induced, you yeah. know. what I'm saying I don't think it was a, a a bad, you know, it was in a bad way, or he was a bad cat. He just wanted to paint, yeah. And he, and he put some good vibes out there for people with Bosovich, and it's been going all my life. You know, it was yeah. weird when I first saw it. My brother turned me on to it, and I'm like, oh man, what? <laughs> Fucking aliens? Is that what I thought what aliens look like? I yeah. thought that was an alien, you know? I was like, oh, weird hit. Maybe they do look like that. I don't know. That'd be great. I don't know. I can't wait. We live out here and the stars are beautiful and bright. You know, I'm always like, man, or a patch of land, we have a perfect spot for when we come. Yeah. I'm like, come on. <laughs> come on. And maybe someday you'll see a Balsavich somewhere well, out here in Eureka Springs. Well, we know? don't have any kind of folklore here. Really? I don't. I can't believe we don't have any. Like, I feel like it's know, weird. I feel yeah, like, I'm sure it's we have like a foggy a, monster or yeah, mountain like this foggy you know, town or some mountain. You know, yeah, I feel like they have you something. know, like the Rainbow Gitter or something. Like a Wendigo or something. Because like uh, I was like, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no, you know, myth or lore around here about some weird thing in the Ozarks. Yeah. And like, you're like, no. I'm like, what? So we're gonna have to make one. So my buddy, who's a, he, he does all this fil- films and shit around here. Uh-huh. We're gonna do the Death Wizard. Death Wizard. Yeah, we wanna <laughs> we wanna make up a guy that lives in the woods here that you see every once in a while. So we're gonna put him on a skateboard and he'll be sliding by. Oh, we're gonna we make can, all fun, weird shit. Maybe we can spread that down Little Rock. Right? Death Wizard. You guys spread the death, death, the death Wizard and you're gonna dude, he mixed up a bad batch of fucking dope, Eureka's man, and Wizard. fucking turned him into this wacko, man. Yeah. You know, fucking, as the death wizard, he rides a skateboard. <laughs> but we just, yeah, my buddy, he's, he just hired me to do, um, I have to play um, Billy Idol's White Wedding. Uh-huh. We're, we're going to slow it down like typo negative. Yeah. And he's going to sing it, and I'm going to play the music so he can have this music for this video he's shooting at the Crescent. 
Yeah. And he's wanting to do a promotional video for couples to get married at the Crescent. Okay. So it's going to be the white wedding song, Slow Down, Eerie. When you, It's going to f- start with a couple getting married out in the yard, you yeah. know, and doing a thing. And then they turn around and they walk into the Crescent. And as soon as they walk into the Crescent, all the people that were in the crowd that was watching the wedding are inside playing all these wild characters. Yeah. So all of a sudden it turns into a you know, thing where you got all these wild characters. And he knows all the ghosts that's been seen there. Oh. So he's got people dressed up as that and stuff. So he's going to try to make it a promotional video for the Crescent to use for people to come get married. So I get to be the preacher. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet. But yeah, man. Oh. Yeah. This guy's got it. Percy Waters, 1920s. You know, he owns all this stuff. And I'm trying to get him to move down here to have to do a museum. That'd be sick. Yeah, because he's got so much stuff and he wants to have a museum. I was like, man, it'd be awesome to have you come here and live here and have a museum here. And the and the tattoo machine hasn't changed in over 150 years. Mm. It's a doorbell. All this is is a doorbell. These are two coils with iron with brass wrapped around them. And then a piece of iron here and they're connected so they make a horseshoe. Right, and then they're wired up, and then they make a magnet. When you turn it on, it's a magnet, and that's a bar pulls to it. That spring, when it lets off, springs it back, pulls back. Ticka 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 ticka. It's got a spring bottom, got a spring on the top. Ticka ticka ticka, and you can tune it. It hits soft and hard. So it's the same same thing. I build the shit out of it. But this is cool stuff, you know. Ladies back in the day, they were all carnival ladies. So the more tattoos they had, the more money they'd make. So that's when you see a full body lady tattoo back then. It was because she worked, you know? Wasn't because she was like hanging out, because she made a shitload of money. Uh, the great Omi, he's a guy that's got his full face tattooed, and filed his teeth and shit. You can find pictures of him. Uh, he, in the World's Fair, had like, I don't know, four million people pay like two bucks a piece to see him one year, wow. you know? So. But they call him the great Omi because every tattoo artist that saw him was like, there's the Omi, he owes me money. Great Omi. So, pretty cool. But the history's good in tattooing. I don't want to, we keep it just real traditional up here. Here's Sailor Jerry. Probably the most important tattoo of the 20th century. So, I started in 90. So, we're looking, fuck, we're looking at 34 yeah, years. 33, yeah, 34 years. Yeah. So, yeah, we started a long time ago. He brought it in here and, like there was two people, now there's fucking 2,000. Um, we got business cards from the first shops here, um, old stuff. These are, see, we build tattoo machines, so these are frames from certain people um, over the years that build tattoo machines, so we build them. Percy Waters, 1920, you know, the shit started probably eight, I think they can date it back to like 1840. Uh, Is that you right there? Yeah, that's a convention. There's tons of stuff. Like I said, if you look at the, uh, this is Char- this is Charlie Wagner. This guy here's in New York City. He worked at the uh, the Bowery for 50 years. One of the world's most famous tattoos, but he was a drunk. And then he died and they threw all the shit away. And if you can get one of his machines, they're like $10,000, $15,000. You can get one piece of history, but yeah, cool shit. We got Zeiss. This is an old, uh, the first tattoo supply company in America. So. They would send these. I sold all those, but yeah. Yeah, I was hoping you'd document the elevator ride. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta get it all. You know, it's all part. It's crucial. It's part of the experience. We turn to the right. people are aware of or have a desire for yeah I do the weird stuff nice so 
There's well, other people that do weird stuff too. And we're probably a small minority of the art community. Yeah. Most people like to do landscapes and still lives and things like uh, traditional. Yeah. Or art is, but I just do the the odd stuff. I don't know. I don't really have any odd. Well, those are pretty odd. Could you examples. give us uh, those are odd examples of what I do? Right nice. Could you give us a, just a general tour around the space here? Yeah, yeah. This is where I do the main painting. This is the one I'm working on now. This is okay. this is an older painting that I started when I was 23. Nice. It's, what made this you? This is from 1980. So do you just have so, it on display, or well, like, I'm still working on it. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, what made you bring it for bring well, this painting back after so many years? Well, it's it's always been with me. Nice. And I, I've been working on it periodically for the last 44 years. That's really cool. So this this stuff here down here is the oldest stuff. And yeah. Then I went up here, and more more of this is newer stuff here. And this this is going to be the street artist, is what I call this painting. This nice. guy here, he's the street artist, and so allegedly he's painted all of this stuff here. Yeah. This is all out of his imagination. Sweet. And it's it's not finished either. I still got a a monster to paint in there and nice. some stuff to paint in there. It's really so, cool. Do you ever yeah. see yourself finishing this piece or do you I, just I try to. gonna keep adding it to it until you feel like it's there's yeah. nothing like that or you I think there's always some of that? Time I have left, so yeah. I gotta really get busy on it. Yeah. How old are you again? Sixty seven. Sixty seven. All right. Yeah. Just turned that way. Nice. In January. But almost everything in here is unfinished. I, mean, I saw you were making a note of these. These are all unfinished. So this this is my father here. Oh wow. He's finished. Yeah. He's the only one that doesn't have hands. Everybody else will oh. have hands if they're a real person. And these are bowling pins, right? Yeah, bowling pins. Nice. This is bowling pin art that I do. That's really cool. I like that. This is a cat I used to have. Oh. This is going to be a kind of an ocean scene with monsters, sea monsters. And yeah. All that kind of going on. There's a what I call a crater man. He's, he's got craters all over him. And he's got a turtle shell for a hem, helmet. Nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that just, that comes to me. Things come to me like that. That's, that's cool. So how do you, I mean, other than, you know, passion and for the, for the craft, do you, how often do you sell pieces? Do you make them to sell them? Or at this point, you just want to yeah. make what you want to make? I do what I want to do. Yeah. I paint for myself. So every once in a while, somebody will ask me for something. Yeah. And it's usually a Balsavich. Yeah, Balsavich. Yeah. But sometimes I get a other. Money maker. It's a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a thing. Yeah. It's, it's a real thing. It's been around for since 78. Yeah. Well, could you tell me more about Balsavich? How it sort of came to be? Well, it's, there's another guy involved, and that would be Mike Thomas. This guy here, he plays guitar and writes songs. I was, was going to ask about that. I was going to ask, because I know, like, the early, because I had read some of the early, like, newspaper clippings, yeah. talking about how it was, like, like, a band of few people sort of working on it. So. Well, it was just two people, two me, people? And, okay. me and Mike Thomas. All right. He was in Parkview High School when he created it on a desk. He was just in a study hall, and he just scratched it with a yeah. pen knife. With a pen knife, he just scratched it on the surface of this desk. And it was kind of scratchy and not really well done. But yeah. then he brought it to me on a piece of paper and said, what can we do with this? And it was just a cartoon, you know? And so I said, well, we can make it three dimensional and make it bigger. Nice. I don't know what to do with it. It's just, it's an interesting creature. It's got five points to it, like a pentagram does. Yeah. So you gotta go, uh, it's got symmetry to it, symmetry to it, so. Let's see. Oh, let's put it on a wall. So yeah, that's what we did. But we were also in a band. I was playing the drums, and he was playing the guitar and writing the songs, and we got a bass player. What's the name of the band? It was City. City. It was a very flash in the pan type thing back in seventy seven, seventy eight, yeah. seventy nine. How was what was the music scene like back then? Well, it was very sparse. Not like really? it is now. It's there's lots of bands now, but back then it was like here and there maybe a band, or, and they were okay. They'd be okay, but there was no really standout bands that I can tell you about yeah back then I didn't really go to bands I was more concentrated on my own playing and trying to help Mike Thomas out with his music he, he was a sheer genius as yeah. far as guitar play he had all kinds of styles he did the flamingo style and classical guitar style and he had the heavy metal guitar. where is he at nowadays 
He has died. Oh, really? Two years ago. Yeah. Wow. About three years ago now, in November, wow. twenty-one. But he, yeah, he was a he was younger than me, but he had some uh, physical problems, and he, he yeah. didn't make it. Well, did you ever feel? You said you're doing music and art. Was there ever a time where you felt like you were more compelled to do sort of one craft or the, over the other, or did you well, sort of love doing both, or was there ever a time where I've, one I've sort of been torn between music and really? art? Yeah, yeah. So you know, I play a mandolin. That's cool. And uh, for keyboards over there, I, I do a little bit, very little. But yeah, the mandolin I've written a few songs on myself. Nice. And uh, I'm not any kind of expert on it. I'm just sort of a a chord and a rhythm person, but yeah. every once in a while I go, ding, 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 ding. you know, you got to put that in there. Yeah, you know, if you're a mandolin player, yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. I could, I could play a tune for you real quick if you want to get that on video. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you want to. Yeah, but it's no problem. How does the really how does the back light look? Oh, it's, I'm framing it so that. It's okay, fine. I'm just making sure because I know we're standing. We can move. I just want to. with fingers they used to pick. Yeah. I don't have one right now. There I am with my head in a cloud and I walk along dreaming aloud of a sky blue rain. Hope is my pain. Far and wide and narrow and near are the voices calling to my inner ear. They say, why are you here? Find who you are. Much must be done. And you can go far. Okay. Oh, oh. okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. That was really good. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for thank you for showing did, that. Did to you us. get me bumping into the wall? <laughs> yeah. Good. All right. I saw a cat in here. Where yeah, did the yeah, what's the cat's name? Halo. Halo. She's kind of shy with company. But I saw her something about a second ago. Yeah, she's a white cat. She's under the bed. I'm sure. I don't know. She might come out. Yeah, she <laughs> came out and then she went back in. Yeah. Now, when I was me and the, a couple of friends, we were I had this idea for. Just sort of, I wanted to do like this series on YouTube, sort of documenting different Arkansas stuff, local legend story of stuff that people don't really know about. And I thought this would be a really good first video idea. And I've been a fan of, you know, the Balsavich and your work for a few years now. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for doing this, a really cool opportunity. Sure. But uh, we had filmed, in summer we were filming all the different sightings of the symbol that we could find. And one of them was the clock in the tattoo shop. And we had talked to mm -hmm. the guys if they had known anything about it. And then they said, well, we, we don't, but the owner can tell you, the owner Scott Diffie. Scott Diffie yeah. So I talked with him like two weeks ago. I went up to Eureka Springs and we talked to him and he had mentioned that, uh, like the story about like the alien abduction and like the, for the origin of Balsevich. Could you give any <laughs> truth to that? Or like, what's the story behind yeah, that I think one? he made that up. Really? <laughs> Because yeah. he said someone said that like you you had seen it in like a, a dream or like you were abducted. Let me let me try to remember what he said. I think the story was you were abducted by aliens, and the aliens looked like that, and you know. they they let you go, but like they cursed you with drawing your symbol everywhere. Have you oh, heard of that yeah, before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That does sound familiar actually, but it sounds like something he made up. Something he made up. Like I made it. Yeah, but maybe I made it up at that time just to please him. Yeah. You know, sometimes I, I do that because yeah. they, they ask questions and you don't know the answers to and you got to just make something up. Yeah, I, I understand That's that. That's interesting, <laughs> you know, but I don't remember telling him that story, but I <laughs> yeah. remember it coming back to me like he was the one that made it up. So. Yeah. Well, it's kind of cool that, I mean, there's yeah. could be different interpretations of it, you know, right. all these years. So when you first did the Balsavich, did you plan on, like, being this, like, sort of anonymous thing? Yeah, yeah. Like, did you want to... We keep that way for a while, right? Or? Yeah, Mike Thomas and I. We didn't really seek in, any attention for that. We wanted to, people to come to our music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, 
we, we, we played our music, but we made eight balsa bitches in Little Rock and two in North Little Rock and in, within the 70s before it became 1980. Yeah. And we just wanted to be anonymous. We didn't want any attention. We wanted to just have people mystified. And, and there's a story where I used to work in a doctor's hospital mm -hmm. as a cook or a baker, actually. I was the main baker at yeah. 22 years old. Anyway, for some reason, they had me at 22 years old being the main baker. And I sat down well on break one time, and these two guys that deliver food up to the patients in the hospital, they, 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 they were about as far away from me as you are right there. Yeah. And they started talking to each other about, do you see that Bostovich in the Sears break room? <laughs> and I wanted to say, there's no, there's no Bostovich in the break room. I've never been in the Sears break room. Yeah. But I didn't say anything. I just kept real quiet and listened to these guys talk about Bostovich. Yeah. It was very, very strange. And I, they didn't know that the guy that did it was right there sitting there and he just couldn't say anything. Yeah. Must feel good. <laughs> well, no, I felt terrible. Oh, really? I wanted, I wanted to tell him. Yeah. yeah you guys, just the burden of a secret. I, here it is. Here it is on that. And see, I'm the guy that does it. But, you yeah. know, anybody could do it. So yeah. It wouldn't prove a thing. But, yeah. Yeah. And there, there's a lot, of, a lot of kids in high school that were drawing that thing when it was out. That's how they learned to draw. And, and, they became an art student just by wanting to draw a ball stage. Yeah. I got story after story of all these high school kids that said, yeah, I used to draw that in my books <laughs> in the classroom. Yeah. So I, I take that to heart and say, yeah. Yeah. I wish uh, somebody had done that when I was in high school, but mm -hmm. nobody did. I was, yeah, I mean, fill, fill in the need, you know. You gotta... Yeah. Well, so far, I think I've done terrible. I usually speak better than I have. But no, you don't I'm, kind of, I'm kind of a work disoriented or something. All right. So what did, when you first start painting, what age did you realize mm -hmm. you enjoyed that? Well, in the 60s, my father bought some oil paints. He thought he would do something. Okay. And he didn't. He just, they just sat there day after day, week after week, month after month, this oil paint set. And he yeah. just never, never replied to it. I asked my mother, well, what are we going to do with this? And she said, well, your dad wants to try to paint something. Well, I'll do something. So there was a canvas, and I started painting. I painted a, a trip that I thought was, we took to Colorado back in 64. I tried to to duplicate it Yeah. I, as an 8-year-old. I was an 8-year-old trying to remember what I was doing in Colorado as a 7-year-old. And so I painted this scene, and it's I still got the thing. I yeah. still, still got it. So that's when I started painting was sometime in 65, 1965. Nice. Well, by 1975, I, I thought I was pretty good. I was 18 then, and yeah. and I could I could draw anybody's face. I could draw any picture. I could copy it. It was no problem. It was just, I just practiced before that, and by the time I was 18, I didn't need to practice anymore. Yeah. I can do it right now without ever having to practice. So, uh, uh, at what age or what time do you think you sort of formed your own style? Or do you even really have a style you think you describe your art as? Mm, no, I, I have several styles. Yeah. Like like these faces, these faces here. Yeah. That's a, that's a style and that's a style. And they're also duplicated up there. Yeah. But that's one way of doing a face. And then I do other faces that well, I don't have an example in here, but they're different. Everything's yeah. different. Every style is different. I have like at least five different styles that yeah. I try to use. And sometimes they're abstract. Sometimes they're realistic. I never do photorealistic. That's that's uh, like yeah. a bit more time than I want to put into anything. It's to me, you might as well take a picture with a camera. Yeah, I got photorealism. And the thing about photorealism is that if you see any of these examples on the internet. It looks like the same guy did every one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't tell one style from the next because they're all photorealism. Yeah. And the only way you can tell the difference is if the subject matter is specific to a certain way of doing it. Like somebody wants to do faces, that's that's how they do it. If somebody wants to do hands or animals, they, that's what they do. And that's how you know who did it because that's what they pursue is that style. But for the most part, photorealism is just the same across the board, everybody does the same exact thing. Yeah. So there's no style. There's no not real talent. It's yeah. just a copyist. Yeah, it's, it's weird. It's like a, it's like something that takes like 
an immense skill and talent, but like it's almost so patience. Yeah, but it's almost so realistic that it's like, you know, there, I mean, you spend all this time doing this, but it's so realistic that at the end of the day, it just looks like a photo, you know. So yeah, and you might as well take a picture and you're done right there. Yeah, you know, there's so, no difference. Right. Yeah. The only thing different about that is they can get they can zero in and focus in on a sharper line in the background. There's no if you use a photograph, sometimes it'll get blurry in the background because it comes out of focus. Yeah. But with photorealism, you can go as far back in the background with your real realism as you want to. Yeah. And that's what makes that different than a photograph. Yeah. But I'm still not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I see that. So right. with uh with your art did you other than it being this, you know, passion slash hobby, there was there ever a time where you sort of felt like it was become a vessel for any internal pain or struggles? And was there any time where you could use your art to express any deeper pains? Mm. Oh, rarely, rarely. You know, I, I like that guy there, the, the guy that's in pain. Yeah. You know, that that's an emotion that's inside me. And of course, I believe it's inside anybody. Yeah. But I'm depicting it, depicting it there as an oil painting. Yeah. It's just a guy that's in radiation. You know, he's been, he's a Holocaust victim. He's, oh. <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's got a hard time going uh, by the way he looks. He's, yeah. He's got problems. So, to me, that's like, part of me is in there. It's on the wall. Yeah. That's just a little tiny part of me. Do you think a part of you is in all, all of your art, mm -hmm. all your paintings, or? No, not really. Uh, like that guy there, the, the naked guy, he's, yeah. just, he's just welcoming you to a bad planet. Yeah. Uh, this, we're in the wrong planet, huh? welcome aboard. That's what he's doing, that's what he's doing. Yeah. And uh, that's not me, there's nothing about me in that painting. Do you have any favorite art, you know, other than mm, that piece, or? Well, the favorite art I have has been sold. Really? To, yeah, to people that, also thought it was a favorite of theirs. So yeah, <laughs> they got it. But I, you know, I have pictures of them. I keep yeah. pictures there on Facebook and places like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I do have some favorites. I do have some examples <coughs> of my favorites. Too. All right. Let's see. Like this one right here is one of my favorites. This one's up there. This is the original. This is a Balsovich that a guy asked for. He oh. was commissioned Balsovich. Yeah. And it's a very large one. It's about that tall and that wide. It's one of the biggest paintings I've ever painted. And here's another favorite of mine. It's uh, sort of a Cubist type painting. It's where two people are embracing. Let's see if we can get that up. This is their hearts coming together. They're kind of in a box and then another box. It's it's the way you do cubism. Yeah. It's the way I do it. Mm -hmm. Same guy got this on his wall. Oh. That asked for this, so he got he got two of them. He was it was a guy's name was John Scott. He had a van, customizing van shop in North Little Rock on MacArthur. That's cool. And he also got one on his building. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, here it is. I was looking for this one. This is a. One of my favorite, favorite of all time. I put three months of effort into that one in 1978. June, July, and August is when I painted that. Nice. Wow. It's acrylic. It's really cool. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up without shiny. This is called Cataclysmic Shock. <coughs> another person bought that from me. That was really cool. So it's it's another large painting. Yeah. But it's kind of in the surrealistic fantasy type area. Most of my stuff really is like this. This is this is where we got the name Balsevich is from this painting right here. 
I just made the name up for this painting. For just that, made the name up for that book. So is that the back of a book? It was on the back, or well, no, you made I it just up made for the it painting. Up, yeah. I gotcha. Right. So interesting. Mike Thomas saw that and he said, "Let's use that for the name." So it was his idea to use my name. Yeah. The name of the creature. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Well, I've got all kinds of things in here, but I don't think you have that kind of time. Uh, we can. You know, We're not rushing what I need anything. is a gallery. Yeah. Do you ever see yourself in the gallery? I have at one time. I didn't. I just don't have a. Uh, I guess I can't say it's one of my favorite places to be. Yeah. I mean, what about, I mean, we're right across from the art museum. You think yeah, they would ever eventually open the space for you? Maybe. Maybe. Other local artists have gone in there and got their stuff put into the the little office where, you know, they sell, what is it? Souvenirs. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, the souvenir station. <coughs> so maybe I can get in there. I don't know yet. Yeah. I, I haven't gotten the nerve up to go in there yet. Yeah. But I will. So I know some people sort of see like the iconography, you know, especially of the Balsevich and even other pieces of your art, and it has almost this like captivating, almost, I mean, pieces that aren't dissimilar to pieces of art you see in like head shops or like just among general stoner, stoner culture. Mm-hmm. Are you regretful at all that it never sort of made like a, a nation or at least a, a countrywide appearance in different types of? Hmm spaces within this culture or are you sort of yeah. glad it stayed local well and i'm kind of split on that yeah you know i'd like it to be nationwide or worldwide It'd be yeah great. That, that requires you to go out and anonymously paint these things <laughs> yeah in every city every yeah. big city a whole a whole world yeah. tour and then do it again because the first time wouldn't be enough they'd say yeah. oh that's some some graffiti and then you do it again that's what gets their attention yeah because in little rock yeah it got their attention for a while that first one on Cantor. Yeah. Are you we upset at all of the destruction of that one? It happens. It's, yeah. I've seen it happen over and over for 40 years. None of them exist. They're all deteriorated or the buildings are gone. Yeah. So, yeah. They, they don't last very long. you got to accept that. Yeah. The one that's lasted the longest is in North Rock on that rock. But oh, yeah. By the freeway there. That one's been there since 81, November of 81. It was first painted on a bare rock with white paint. Yeah. Just a white line on the paint, Mm -hmm. on the rock. And then these two guys I didn't know came along and painted black on it and redid the outline of the white paint. And that you had nothing to do with them. I had nothing to do with that. And it stayed like that for years. Oh, wow. Until 2013 when I decided to follow through on an idea I had just to paint the whole face white. Yeah. You know, like like the the real boast of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's what I did on the rock, painted the face. A lot of people didn't like it because they were so used to the, oh, really? the graffiti looking thing. But Yeah. Well, it seems like every depiction is like slightly different. I mean, is that is. on purpose or yeah. do you ever, do you ever go in and think like, oh, I'm going to make his eyes a little bit bigger on this one or a little mm-hmm. bit smaller? Well, no, sometimes it just happens that way. Yeah. I, I don't think ahead, but. Yeah. Because you do it from memory, just, right? I mean, you don't have oh, like yeah. a reference. You right. just kind of. The idea is to try to get it to look like this guy every time. Nice. And some of them just don't. Yeah. Some of them are totally off. I don't have any examples right here, but I've got some weird looking Balsaviches. Yeah. <laughs> They're still Balsaviches, but they have to follow these certain rules. They have to have that shadow there. They have to have that shadow there. They have to have these two ankle shadows like that. I mean, perhaps so, it's... So they all have rules. It's almost like a species, you know, that's... Yeah. They all look like this, but they all look a little yeah. different. Maybe well, it's a Baltimore species. And they all have the same light source. More than out. one. Right. Yeah, they're yeah. all they're yeah. all facing the exact same way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is a species. So there's a different Baltimoreches, but they all look very similar. The eyes should always look very similar yeah. to these eyes. Have you ever thought about like a, like a story behind it, just in your head? Yeah. Or you just... yeah. Well, I've got a comic book idea that you know I don't want to give it away. Yeah. <laughs> but I can start the comic book by saying. Well, it starts off, this is the beginning of Balsage. Yeah. So this little lady, young lady and her son are walking down a dirt road at night. It's 1957, let's say it's a long time ago. Mm-hmm. You know, and all of a sudden there's this little stand there with these these two guys, or no, it's a little it's a little old lady, I'm sorry. Yeah. She's a little old lady and she's, she's over these 
toys. It's just a bunch of stuffed animals. And the kid says, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. And the kid says, he, the mom says, oh, we don't need any of that. And she says, I want it, I want it, I want it. I want that balsa. Or whatever it is. There's all kinds of stuffed animals. There's cat, dog, and then there's a balsa bitch. Yeah. A stuffed balsa bitch. And she, he wants that one. So she says, she gets it, and, and they go walking down the road. And behind them, the little old lady turns into two aliens that are stacked up on top of each other. And they get in a spaceship and take off. Yeah. So they've done their thing. They've... They've got a Balsavich introduced into the society of the Earth. Yeah. And that's how I started my comic book. So Sounds good. That's Sounds a, promising. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyway, this Balsavich, he, he thinks it's just a stuffed animal, but it's really something that actually comes to life and talks to him. And yeah. Tries to reason with him. Sort of yeah. like a... He's a five-year-old boy. Five-year-old boy. Yeah. Thinking, so, would you think like, I mean, you don't have to give anything away, but like, would it, would it be a mostly friendly creature or maybe a... Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a concerned creature of the human race. They're yeah. concerned of our well-being. And that's why he's always got that concerned look on his face. Yeah. He's, he's, he's worried he's watching. about watching. <laughs> yeah. He can't do anything about it, but he's worried. Yeah. I that's that's pretty much also that. just predicament. He's, he can't do anything, but he can see what's going on. Yeah. He can scrutinize all he wants, but he can't interject anything. He's just always watching, huh? Yeah. Yeah. In my mind, he is. Yeah, no, that's that's interesting. So you know, when people drive around the city and they see one, yeah, he's watching you. Yeah, I don't want to say you have any regrets because I feel like it's a little too big. I guess I'm saying, I mean, do you ever look back at just really any of your experiences and wish you could have a bit of advice that you now know with this life you've lived so far? No, I really couldn't tell you that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I am a person that goes with the flow. And yeah. And uh, when I get an idea for art, that's what I do, is I sit down and try to put it out there to where it looks like what I, I visioned in my mind. Yeah. Right, so yeah, I, I don't have any regrets. Everything I've done is to the level I wanted, pretty much wanted to take it. Yeah. Except for, you know, this one here. This this is a regret. This is, a, this is called the uh, Family tree, dead limb on a family tree. That's who I am, since I have no kids. My two is, this, is this painting like just the best representation of all your regrets? or No, this? no, it, but it will be. It will be, okay. You know, I'm, I'm getting there. Yeah. There's all kinds of little spaces you can do things in. Like here's my dog that I had for 11 years, Dachshund. Yeah. She was a great, great dog, but I have her there. And these steps to me represent a sound from the river back in the 60s when they were working on the the river, the dam, yeah. it had a motor or a pump that lasted all night long. Which chunk, which chunk, which chunk, which chunk. And you're trying to sleep. You know, I lived in Kingwood in Little Rock. Yeah. And you could hear that sound all through the night. And then these steps are inside my house at that time. And I always envisioned some little creature hammering down there. And that's what the, yeah. the noise, you know. That, so that's what that is. Yeah. And is this, then this an alien here. He's got the angel. The angel's oh, on yeah. the... The devil's on my back. This is me. I'm, I'm balancing on the tip of a point of a unicorn. Yeah. And that's the devil. That's an angel. And that's an alien. They're all stacked up on me. They're all on my back. Yeah. They're, they're just driving me crazy. And then here's my spirit breaking through the other side. And I, I can't tell you every little thing. Like, this has a secret meaning I'm, I'm not supposed to say. Yeah. <laughs> And here I am down here in this little window, real far away. And here's a ghost. What here's, about here's a mermaid. What about this face over here? Under the yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a hooded figure under the tail of the horse. It has no meaning as far as I know. It's just yeah. fit in there. It just, it just fit in there. So I put it in there. And I have a train coming out of a tunnel that's coming out of a mountain that's got a dragon coming out of the chest area of this shirt. Yeah. Who's, I mean, who's this guy supposed this to be? This supposed to be me. That's you? Okay. When I was 23. Nice. But I had, well, I, you know, I had long hair. Yeah. Not like yours, but it was long. It was long. Yeah. It came out. A little longer than bald, yeah. I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It came down to my shoulders at certain points. But Yeah. Yeah, that's, right now I just got it bald because I don't know what kind of hair I'm going to have. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I finish it. <laughs> so, you know, I just start with a bald head there. Nice. Yeah, that's, and this is a place, this is Krillman Ridge in Saline County, this place I used to live. Yeah, I live in Saline County right now, so. Yeah, this was in Heron, Heron. sort of northern, northern yeah. Saline County. 
Oh, we three it? live in, in Bryant right now. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. I've been there, know it. Nice. Yeah, I, used to, I lived uh, in Saline County for 20 years because my parents, my grandparents had property there. Actually, yeah. my great great grandfather bought something in 1930, 200 acres. When I moved out on it, it was just 50 acres about going like that. Yeah. Well, there's a picture of it over there on the wall. Oh. The house I used to live in. Wow. That was quite primitive living there. So you said uh, you never had kids. Have you no. been married at all, or? Yeah, I have been married twice. I lived in that house once with the first one. Yeah. That didn't last very <laughs> They don't they don't like to live out there. Really? Yeah, it's really rough. Were any were any of them not fans of the the art or sort of the uh, process? You know, or? both of them were fans of the art. Yeah. And we don't have to jump to the My personality, they weren't fans of my personality. Wow. Or, you know, a few people are, I have to admit that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of a inbound, housebound person. I, I don't get out very much. Yeah. I'll go to the store and go to the post office every once in a while. Pretty much I stay here and just do my artwork. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's a good space to be, you know, it's better than, yeah. I mean, for not wanting to leave too often, it's, it's better than, All right. yeah, you know, anywhere else, I guess. Yeah, yeah it's a good location. I, everything I need is here. The store is on Kroger on Roosevelt. Yeah. In the art center right there, if I need any art. Yeah. <laughs> and I surely don't. Nice. Well, I, I know I haven't really answered your questions very well. <coughs> no, I think you've done a good job. I mean, I'm not, I'm not looking for anything particular, you know, except right. I want you to, you know, up to you to, you know, say what's up about your life in your right. mind, you know. I don't want to want well, to direct you. This is my anything. owl collection. Picasso, I got a real Picasso there. So back when he uh, did really quick drawings on the beach. That's an actual Picasso? Yeah. I keep forgetting Picasso was like... He, he had over 3,000 works of art. Wow. Sculptures and paintings. Yeah. I keep, I, I forget that he was recent in time. Yeah, yeah, I think he was born in 1901 or something like that. Wow. Really, really close to the century. So how did you get that piece? Well, my father had it. Your father my had it? My father was an art collector. And nice. he, he died. And I went and yeah. got a lot of his stuff out of California. You ever thought about moving anywhere else out of Arkansas? Or is it, you know, no. you said your dad is in California. Yeah, he moved on his own. His father lived there. My grandfather lived yeah. in Santa Barbara, California. So he decided to go back there and live the rest of his life. He divorced my mother in 75 took on a new life in California. Yeah. Interesting. And so he, what he did, he started a travel agency and he got into the time when people were going crazy for cruises up to Alaska. Yeah. And they were just spending money like crazy. And he had this travel agency and before the internet. Yeah. <laughs> he, he made millions of dollars. Oh, wow. Just nice. So he had a giant art collection. Very cool. And that's the only thing I've got of his art collection. On Picasso, yeah, but he had Salvador Dali. Oh wow! Some, some other names that were big. Nice. I know I keep saying nice a lot. It's just. <laughs> All right. Here's a sculpture of Balsa, which I did. Oh. When did you this do this Balsa one? Wood. Huh? When did you do that one? Like oh, this is like a, about three or four years ago. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, it's very delicate, so the years are broken. Had to reclue them. I th I'm thinking of my painted the blue color. Blue. Yeah, it's either a tan color or a blue color for boss. Yeah. No other colors. Never a never a red, never a green. No. Yeah. I've experimented with everything. <clears throat> with Photoshop, you can just go in there and yeah. <laughs> see what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. I pretty much exhausted that. What's cool that he's stuck to a mainly a specific look all this time, you know, hasn't really altered too much. No, no. Yeah. There's a, the book, the 
the book I wrote for it had a different kind of balsa mix on the cover. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen that cover, but it, it's a different, it's a balsa mix, but it looks really mean and really alien looking. It's yeah. It's like, like that. <laughs> so, but that, that's what I was doing back in 85 when I was drawing that. It wasn't interested in maintaining the original that was on the wall in the first place. Yeah. But now I'm back to that. I'm back to wanting to reproduce that same face. Yeah. When I do it. Yeah. I remember I had, I've looked at your Facebook and your website and I know it has uh, like clippings from that either newspaper or yearbook, sort of this, I mean, mm. from like the 70s describing oh, yeah. part of it. Do you have a copy of that or anything? Yeah. Well, like, like that? I had the or book. Or like the original? I've, everything in the book is in, in the Mika Dagi. Yeah. I think it. Yeah, I don't know where it's going to be. That's Dale Bumpers. Oh. He was the governor of Arkansas oh. when I was 14 years old. Oh, wow. And that's when I drew that. Huh. I tried to copy the George Fisher style of cartoon. Yeah. It looks like, I don't know where it is right now. Mm. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, that's fine. I was I mean, wondering. I, I swear I thought I had, those things are taking up a lot of room somewhere. Yeah. Because they're big newspaper articles, and I've got them like this. Yeah. So I thought they were in this. I was mistaken. Well, uh, yeah, I've lost my copy of the book. It's not a big deal. I'm not and, you know, it's, it is a big deal because I made 100 copies of that book, and I sold every one of them for oh, I think, a dollar or so. <laughs> Well, then, I yeah, should have well, had my find it then, you know. My copy's disappeared. Oh, well, I don't know what where it went. Don't mean to. But it's it's, mean undermine it's it. reproduced in the Facebook. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you've gone and read, written. I mean, read all of the the story there. Yeah. Well, but I think I was there. I was wondering because I tried and it's like the picture quality. It's kind of hard yeah. to read. That's so. okay. You're on the you're on the different site. Go to Balsa Vision. Balsa Vision. And, and the same stories there, but you can enlarge the print okay. where you can read I'm it. I'm actually do that. Yeah, the, one of the sites doesn't have it to where you can read it. I think that's the one you were looking at. Probably, yeah. I should just get rid of those. I mean, I wasn't sure if it was just like the picture quality because of Facebook or no, just like what no, it's the photo by No, it's the way I uploaded it. Yeah, yeah. But the Boston Division, I think that's where you get the whole story and you can read the actual pages. Yeah. What's the latest Boston bits you did? Because I know you've been doing some commissions. Mm. When's the last that one you did that? Station. Filling station? In, uh, North Rock. Yeah. That was another strange one. I uh, painted a balsa which that didn't look like any balsa which I've ever painted before and didn't mean to. Yeah. But that's what happened. Yeah. So they got an unusual looking balsa which in the filling station. Have okay. You ever, have you ever been in there and seen it? I don't think so. I think I, I think we tried the day we I was filming the other ones, but it, I think it was closed that day. So oh, okay. have you seen the... Uh, we went to the oh, I forgot the name of the bar. It was in it's this bar in Mamel, like Lucky Bar oh, yeah, or something. Yeah, Lucky's. But it was like like burnt. Like it, it yeah. got caught horrible fire. And they we did. went there, not even I mean, we weren't expecting anything and I mean we looked inside and everything was destroyed and one of the only things still standing was the Balsevich painting on the side of the, the wall. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that, that, is, that is interesting. He survived that that, right. that wreckage. Right. <laughs> yeah. But I think they, they have finally mowed that down. Bulldozer now. Oh, really? So, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that, that lady too. bought a clock from me and uh, shirts. Yeah. And all the paraphernalia, all the magnets and things I had to go. You know, I've got pins. I know that doesn't sound good. It's stored in here. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's Lots of shirts. Oh, nice. Somewhere. Yeah. These are the. These are the stickers. Like this, except I don't have any big ones anymore. Yeah. But I've got the keychains, pins, and magnets. 
teeth. I've got tattoos as well. Temporary tattoos. Nice. There's the pin. Yeah, so that's what I got. Cool. So, uh, <coughs> seems like I have something else. There's the magnets. It's all there. Yeah. This is my Africa section. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> the real Africa stuff. This came from Zambia. Zambia. This came out of a magazine. I just thought this guy looks like that guy and this lady looks like that. Yeah. I'm just going to put them together. Yeah. And then I cut this shape out of a plywood for the Africa shape. Have so you ever been to Africa? No, no. Oh. But my cousins were. They, they were brought up in Zambia. That's cool. It's about where that gorilla is. Nice. This is not finished either. I got to paint the Sahara Desert and all that. It's got to have a lot of animals in every section that's pro appropriate for that. Yeah. Section of Africa. Mm -hmm. This is painted in Africa by some African artist. Yeah. And I framed it. So that's my Africa section. That's not Africa there. That's, yeah. That's a colored pencil drawing. Oh. Wrapping tape. Oh wow! Wrap packages up. Nice. <laughs> yep. I try to think of everything. Yeah. Oh, this this cane here is from Civil War. It's the oldest thing in this, probably this building. Oh wow! It's given to my great great grandfather. In Vermont, Manchester, Vermont, by his students. He was a Medical, he was a medical guy. He did the Civil War. He was the guy that fixed your wounds on the Civil War battlefield. Oh, wow. That's and then he went to teach school after that. Yeah. About he taught medical school. And his students gave him this cane. It's inscripted on the top of the silver there. And then I have a samurai and a, a bow. Stuff I'm also interested in. So I'm interested in the music arts and the martial arts, yeah. the visual arts, any other kind of art there might be. Right. Johnny, did you get a. Have you got a good shot of this painting? Uh, I can get a close one. Okay. And we can Both. do the light if you need to. Yeah. Okay. Back up. I want to. I want a good full. I know like, the lens is a bit tight, but. Yeah, that's Mike Thomas. It's what he looked like when he played his guitar. I just had a little fun with the shadow in the background. Yeah. Was that, did you paint that after he died? No, that's way before he died. Oh, really? Yeah, he was alive. He, he had it in his house. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I had to get it back. This is also a Mike Thomas idea. This is Balsevich in 36, oh. 36 feet. I didn't even notice that was those that. Yeah, these are all Balsaviches. See the point of the hair there. That's really cool. And there's 36 feet all the way around inside. What I like about it is the triangles that it produces. My favorite triangle is from that point to that point to that point. So you just see a, that shape there. Right there. That's all I look at is that shape there. Yeah. It's just an unusual, there's all kinds of triangles in here. That, that, that. You can, you can find any point on here and make a triangle in it. But that's my favorite triangle is, where'd it go? Somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why I like it so much, because sometimes I can't find it. It's kind of like a puzzle. Right. I showed it to you, didn't I? Isn't that it? One, yeah. there, there. There. Yeah, yeah, there they are. You see these little triangles here that form the, the big triangle. Like that. So, I, Mike Thomas did that. He had a mathematical mind. Wow. It almost looks like a heart. I mean, it, not exactly, but sort of the, you know, kind of, it's a little flat up here, but it sort of caves in. Yeah. Yeah. It's, ge it's geometry. Yeah. Somehow, somehow he saw that in his mind and he put it together. Yeah. I painted it, but he, he drew it out. Yeah. He's 
sort of get any idea of what kind of colors to use. So I signed my name here and I signed his name there in Michael Wayne Thomas. So it's got two signatures on it. Did you ever see the stiff station mural before they took it down and put a new one up? I don't believe so, no. This one right here? You never saw that? On that the, was on the, on the wall of the station? Yeah. This wow. is where the new trolley is. I mean, they had it up for three or four years now. Oh, wow. That's what was on there 23 years before what's on there now is. And somebody took a picture of it and gave it to my brother, and my brother gave it to me. Yeah. So I hang it there. So they, they, they did a new mural over it? or yeah. And that you didn't do that one? No. That, yeah. uh, I can't remember that guy's name. McLeod. Somebody named McLeod. Yeah. He's popular. He's got a few murals all over downtown. Yeah, he uses cool. bright oranges and purples for his murals. Here. Yeah. That's what stands him out is the use of really bright colors. Nice. Oh, what? Uh, I'm good over here. All right. Do y'all have any questions? Yeah. Any curiosities? I think I saw, was that a drawing of Nixon somewhere in there? Yeah. Nixon. I saw that. Uh, right, yeah. He's, I drew that when he was actually president. I was 16 years old, and I drew that. Wow. So, yeah, I used my nickname there, because that's what all I knew is my name was Ronnie, Ronnie Brown. Yeah. But uh, I was not. My name is Roland. It's on the birth certificate. <laughs> I is the president. I used to do a Richard Nixon impersonation. Yeah. <laughs> Especially, you know, when I had CB radio, I'd, I'd get on that. This was Richard Nixon. <laughs> how, are my, how are my people today? People Classic get mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I did it like it was supposed to be done. Yeah, I, mean, I thought it was pretty good, and, and you know, I really was uh, compared to the big famous people like Rich Little. He, he was yeah. pretty good, but he wasn't as good as I was. There was another guy that was better than me, though. David Fry was pretty good. Yeah, most people don't know that guy. He was in the early '60s, yeah. but he was a good impersonator, impressionist. I used to like to do that. I had a million voices. And I had a CB radio, so. That's cool. I had an audience that was very unwilling. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know anything about CB, but you know the closer people are to you when you're talking to them, the louder they are. Yeah. And if you're trying to talk to somebody else further away and then somebody loud comes in, you can't talk to that person. Yeah. Somebody new is in there. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes people mad. You, that, all it CB was was people getting mad at each other. Sounds like a real fun time. Yeah, yeah. And they're driving around, too. They're driving around talking. And saying, yeah. I'll find you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, one night they did find me. Dang. <laughs> and that's the night I quit. Uh, oh. But that's another story. Mm. It's not anything to do with art. <laughs> it's just CB radio. CB uh, city. So we'll yeah. Call it. I actually wrote a song about it. <laughs> Mike Thomas did. Nice. CB city is what he calls it. Did you ever, uh, do you guys ever play at Vino's? No. In your bands? No. Or we knew about it, but we knew. Back then when we were there, it, they were barely anything going on at Vino's. Yeah. As far as I know, I didn't really hear much about it. Yeah. I know. Did you ever play at Whitewater? Because I know there's yeah, a mural did. there. Right, there is. Yeah. And I have played there twice on two different occasions. Well, before we head out, I did want to show you something. Okay. When we were talking to Scott Diffie, I thought it'd be a good idea because I wanted for the video, I want to talk to someone, an outside source first, you know, and then talk to the, the main source, okay. you know, maybe see what, what's different, you know, just someone else's opinion because I know he had, because he had done, or he had had the clock and that's how I found out that he had, he had known you. But I thought it'd be an interesting idea for him to tattoo me while asking questions. Uh -huh. So I actually got a tattoo, it's on your, oh yeah? Yeah. My first tattoo, actually. <laughs> Here's what it looks like. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Now, I know on your Facebook you mentioned a commission rate, and I don't know if 
Yeah. He ever hit you up? No, I'm I'm did. willing to to pay that rate if you want me to. I mean, I can. He was like, like a, bucks. let me take a picture of it. Though. Okay, yeah. That's all I asked. Because yeah, I don't, I don't ever expect the ten percent from these yeah. these guys. Let me see. I've seen three of them now, and this is number four. Yeah. It looks. Yeah, that's that's different. Different, different iteration. <laughs> well, it's different than the other three that I know about. Yeah. They say if you put his spin on it, whatever, oh, whatever that means. He got a spin on it? I, I don't know. Or he just said his, his artistic spin, he said he was going to put it, you know, in, I guess, his style. Well, not I, I, see, style. I see what he's talking about. Yeah. He's just doing the shadows different than I did. Around, yeah. Around the upper, you know, along the side there. Yeah, it's not full of heel yet. It's got some, some dead skin, but... Yeah, that that's it. How long is it? How long has it been on there? We went. He lives up in Eureka Springs now. We drove up. Right. When was that? Like two weeks ago. Was it in January? I think. End of January. It was like a week and a half ago. Yeah. It was Friday. Okay, it was. Today is Thursday. <clears throat> I think it's two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Tomorrow. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I was thinking it was like February the 4th or something. I guess that was earlier. Then, yeah, it was like two weeks Still ago. Still less than a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> Not that long ago. I don't know why I had to be so many mental gymnastics. How much do you charge for that? 200 Really? Yeah. For that size? Yeah, he knows he's not supposed to do it unless he has me for permission. Yeah. That's what I was he thinking. Does he does it anyway. Yeah, I, I was sort of thinking. I was like, oh, he doesn't. I hope Roland doesn't get upset that I got that too. I was like, no, it's just. No, I can't. That's on, that's on the artist. That's on the tattoo artist. Yeah. Well, could I get a photo with you before we head out? Sure. Sort of with my tattoo in frame. <laughs> or just, just an iPhone photo of frame. Gosh. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we're pretty much done. Thank you. Tattoo and frame. Yeah. All right. Did you see that cat? Yeah, it's there. Uh, Halo. She don't appear. She has no tail. Terrible. Oh, no. <laughs> Terrible. You're okay, buddy. She has no tail. Oh man, what happened to her tail? She was born that way. Wow. It's like a bunny tail. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's weird. It's just a little nub there. to strangers, are we? Yeah, it's still a lot to go on that one. But it's it's not like this little guy right here. Like yeah, there's a lot of weird little things. I, I got that one canvas from a, a guy that tried to do something. He put tape all over it, masking tape. And he, like he cut on it a little bit. So it was a really rough surface to put on. Shh. Is that supposed to be anything right there? <coughs> well, the story is, when he was governor of Arkansas, he had a Spanish secretary. Yeah. And her daughter, the Spanish lady's daughter, was getting married to a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And they asked me to paint the bowling pin for a Clinton. Oh, wow. So I said, okay. So I painted the bowling pin and then I took it to Washington, D.C. on the night of the inauguration when everything was going crazy out there. Yeah. And they, they, get, they gave it to him and he accepted it and he kept it in the Office of Information for eight years in the wow. White House. And That's then when cool. he, now it's over here in the Clinton Library in the top floor where nobody can see it. Oh, wow. <laughs> At least that's what I've been told. Yeah. But anyway, it's still there. That's cool. 
It's on my Facebook if you want to go actually look at the boat. Bo yeah, I think I've probably seen it. I, I didn't know it yeah. made its way all the way to D.C., you know? It's pretty cool. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I got bowling pins all over. In 85, I put an ad in a few magazines, bowling magazines. And I got I got on the Today Show with Jane Polly. That's a video. Yeah. Have you seen that video? I don't know. I've, I've got a YouTube channel. channel. What's the name of your YouTube channel? My YouTube is called the Mongolian Film Collective. So, I mean, it's not. I'll write that down. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, once the video is finished, I'll send you, I'll text you a link to it. But, oh, okay. Yeah, it's mostly, I started it back in high school just to post uh, the videos from my film class assignments. And then over the years, I turned it into posting whatever I want. Lots of short films mainly, but I'm trying to post more serious stuff, you know, more more journalistic right. pieces to it, so, but. Well, if you go to my channel, which is called Balsto, yeah. you'll see all my personal videos I made with a tiny camera. Yeah. And they're short, they're not anything that you have to sit down and go, wow, oh, when's this going to be over? Yeah. It's like less than, you can use most of them are two minutes or less. Yeah. And I got one five minute video that's, I'm playing drums for some guy's band. Mm -hmm. That's the only really long one on there. Yeah. About 40 videos wow. since 2006. Nice. Steady output. You, did you ever get many subscribers? or? I had them, but what the problem was, they took away my Hotmail email address. Somehow I just didn't have access to it anymore. Oh, wow. And so I couldn't YouTube. I couldn't change my YouTube stuff. Hey. That's, that's how I was signed in was that, that email address. Yeah. And they took it away from me. I couldn't get in anymore. And so it just sits there without me being able to change videos or delete yeah. stuff or add stuff. I can't add videos. Classic YouTube, man. They always, yeah. they, they have a weird system. Always, mm. always screwing people over in that regard, but. Well, one thing I thought of when I was part of the YouTube early people, they had a thing where you could animate your cover. Oh yeah. Where, where things were moved and they took that away, but I made a video of that. I yeah. said, this is my YouTube channel right now. It may not be like this tomorrow, but it's like that today. Yeah. I had the cat face moving off of the, the butterfly, going back and forth like that. That's one of my favorite animations that I've done. Yeah. I've got a cat, cat and a butterfly. They change faces. Nice. <laughs> and that was, that was my YouTube face. It's, it's one of my YouTube videos now. Right. So you can always see my page. Yeah. You just have to go do one of my videos to do it. Yeah. No, I'll be sure. To, I think I've seen it before, but I'll be sure. To, yeah. I'll be sure to check it out. Right. There's a link to it. I think there is on my page, my Facebook page. Is a, yeah. There's a link to my boss. Sounds good. Well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is different elevator. <laughs> is this really a different elevator? Yeah, because the, the ceiling was off. He yeah. said only one was working. No. He I swear to you, he's at he literally did, already. yeah. We're four seven. Should we get out? Yeah, this is probably a <laughs> this is probably a sign for us to No one pressed the button. I need the up button. Is there a stairwell? Can we use the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the end right there. We got to this journey. Well I thought we were gonna die. Sorry about the, the zoom lens thing, I feel like I know it's gonna be it tricky fun. to work. It with was um I need to get a. It's just, it looks so much better than Zoom. That's the problem. Yeah, I need to get whenever I get situated, it, the shots are a lot cleaner. Yeah, I need to. I need to order another smaller lens. Okay. Like a 25 millimeter. That has a quality of 30. It's my haircut. It's my haircut. It's my haircut. Oh, that was good. There's, there's like caution signs around the elevator in this one. Hold on, I want to check it out. Yeah.
Yeah, I, I, I turned know, the camera. I, I was like, wait, wait. I, the I turned the camera back on to 